Welcome, bienvenue and willkommen. My name is Kelly Lamb. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Mila. From your home, we want to welcome you into our home here at Mila. Over the past weeks, we've brought to you Mila Live, and a lot of the topics have been brought up by you, our customers. Many of you had had questions about products that you own in your home. Many of you also had questions about products that you're interested in buying. Through these sessions, we've hoped to be able to answer the questions for you. We've covered topics on how to best handle the most delicate fabrics in Mila washing machines, how to load your dishwashers properly in a Mila dishwasher, and even to select the best vacuum for your household. Pour ceux d'entre vous qui ont demandé d'avoir des sessions en français, on est content de vous dire qu'on a des sessions maintenant en français sur YouTube. Mila Live is fully interactive. If you're watching us through YouTube, be sure to log in on your YouTube account and you can leave your questions in the comments section. If you're watching us through milalive.ca, just be sure to register on Mila Live and you can leave your comments in the section there. We'll try to get to all your questions during these sessions. If we are unable to, we'll be sure to leave the answers for you in the comment section or email you directly. Many of you have asked the question, what's a better cooking surface for you? Gas, induction? So with that, we thought we'd bring to you in this session of Mila Live, the difference between gas and induction. We're actually gonna do it through a live demonstration. So I'm really excited to have our product expert for cooking with me here, Mike. Good afternoon, Mike. Good afternoon, Mr. Lamb. We have uh, quite the distance today because I think we're gonna like be it. doing a bit of a cook-off. Um, what are we gonna cover today, Mike? Let's just uh, jump right in. We're gonna be uh, comparing head-to-head -head our induction cooking surfaces versus our, our um, range uh, tops uh, powered by gas, of course. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna be using uh, 21st century uh, technology <laughs> and you're gonna be uh, cooking with fossil fuels, which is also <laughs> really good, but certainly um, a little bit different. So without further ado, let's, let's jump right in and e we're gonna do a head-to-head -head race as our first kind of test. And sure. And I'm going to ask that you light your gas burning appliance. Your, so first your of all, I'm going to make sure I turn my ventilation hood on because that is uh, that's key. That, and and a little known fact that in ventilation, uh, you want to get that eddy current going in your home as quickly as possible. So when it's smoked up in your kitchen, it's probably already not ideal uh, from a ventilation standpoint. So good good on you for getting that started, getting that current going. Also, if you had a window, you'd want to crack it and get that air really air flowing. Really so I've got, uh, you've set me up with some room temperature water, so thanks for the head start. Yep. It's not cold. Yeah, and by comparison, I got a pot full of ice cubes and ice water. So uh, I'm, I'm still haven't started my burner here. Okay, gonna... so I'm gonna Turn mine on, it's great. Excellent, I can see the flame shooting up the sides of the pot. It's quite the uh, dramatic entrance for your- I love that. Fuel, that's really good, right? Yeah. Um, it, it gives you a, a visual cue that something is happening. Uh, and certainly you probably already have started to feel some of that heat come off of the surface yep. as well, maybe. Absolutely. Uh, Kelly is cooking on our range top and that has the output on the higher end of the spectrum of almost 20,000 BTUs or British thermal units. So it's. It's quite an intense uh, heat source, and he's off to the races with his room temperature water. And I still haven't really started my... Uh, you you want to start yours? This, or? this is a tortoise <laughs> and hare comparison. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm, I'm looking at my pot. I got ice cubes, beautifully formed ice cubes. And I'm gonna turn on my induction cooktop. This is a 30 inch uh, induction cooking surface. Keep in mind, we have two versions of this 30 inch induction cooking surface, uh, the four cooking zone configuration we have here, as well as a bridgeable PowerFlex version of this cooktop as well. And this uh, slots in right in the middle of our induction lineup. We have an induction cooktop that goes as wide as 36 inches, and then we have one that also gets down to 24 inches as well. So, you know, I, I'm kind of worried Kelly's off to a <laughs> maybe four minute head start here. I'm gonna. <laughs> turn on my uh, cooking zone that I'm gonna be using for this pot here. And so I'm just gonna select my burner. That's gonna flash to this side here. I'm gonna select my power level. I've turned it on at a nine, but seeing as I'm kind of worried about Kelly taking off on me, I'm gonna 
tap into what we call boost function in our induction cooktops. And this is where uh, the cooking surface will actually share some power from adjoining uh, cooking zones. And so I'm going to uh, turn on uh, boost uh, for this cooking zone here. And so this is essentially going to be taking some power from a neighbor. Um, now, the benefits there are that by doing this, uh, this cooking zone um, is able to channel uh, almost six kilowatts of power uh, right here. And so that's a tremendous amount of electrical current that's feeding through an induction coil that's uh, housed below the glass saran surface. And then that is actually uh, interacting with the ferrous material in the bottom of this pot. So for those of you who aren't familiar with induction, that's the magic here, is that the surface itself never really gets hot. Uh, what is actually being agitated here by the electrical current and the interaction with the magnetic coil underneath the surface is the actual bottom of the pan. So this is, this is the secret here to induction. Uh, I don't know about you, Kelly, you probably got some small bubbles forming. What's happening in your pot? I, I was just checking to make sure it was still on because okay. uh, it, I do see some small bubbles. It's, okay. It's coming. I still have um, somewhat uh, less fully formed ice cubes. Um, and uh, while we do this, Kelly, why don't we uh, uh, tiptoe into our next exercise and we're going to sure. maybe preheat some woks because you have a traditional kind of cooking surface with gas. and yep. those cast iron trivets and, and grates. Yep. I have a cooking surface that some people would shy away from maybe wok cooking. So we're gonna demonstrate to our viewers how with the right wok, and we have our partners that's willing, who have been nice enough to um, outfit us with beautiful five ply. Really fantastic. Induction ready woks, really nicely balanced, and they're flat bottom. So this is the key to using uh, a wok on induction cooking surface is to uh, have it so that it is flat bottomed. Obviously, a round bottom walk wouldn't uh, necessarily mm -hmm. produce favorable results in this case on my surface. Kelly would probably, with a walk ring, be able to get away with yeah. that on his cooking surface. But, but I gotta say, even this flat bottom on the traditional grill grates actually works quite well without the walk ring. Yeah. It's actually really nice. <clears throat> it's nicely balanced, yeah. right? Uh, stable. And uh, you're going to preheat yours, yep. and I'm going to lay off on that for a while. I can already tell you that I have bubbles forming in my pot of ice cubes. Now we have no ice cubes visible. We have small bubbles, and, and we're, uh, we, we've turned the corner, I think, here, Kelly. I, think. I, I don't think I have, actually, ironically, <laughs> still yet. It's, okay, well, it's still um, trying to come up to a boil a little bit. In lieu of uh, sports being shut down with what's going on, <laughs> I think you can maybe accept wagers on our, our race today here. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I, I think that's, you know, and the thing is, there are benefits on both sides. Like, I think we have to be very fair about that. Um, definitely one of the benefits on induction, Mike, is just the concentration of the energy heating and it's much more efficient that way right uh, absolutely so there are benefits to both sides there's things that you can do on a gas cooking surface you find yourself a hard pressed to achieve with an induction surface but by and uh, by and large one of the main advantages of this method of cooking is, is certainly the rapidity by which you're able to bring things uh, to uh, high temperatures and now we're at uh, pretty much a uh, a boil. We'll be vigorously boiling uh, in a minute. Um, but I guess uh, the, the key takeaway of our first exercise here is to demonstrate just how quick. I'm, I'm now at a, a rolling boil and soon I'm, I'm pretty much vigorously boiling at this point. So my ice cubes have become, you know, a boiling pot of hot water and I got some bubble over. So I want to reduce this heat quite quickly. So I'm going to uh, activate my cooking zone. Yep. I'm going to turn that to a nine, or let's say I want to just stop it boiling altogether. I turned it down to a two and right away I've come off of my boil. So responsiveness is the other key here. So it may look like a traditional glass ceramic surface that's powered with radiant electrical heating, uh, but this is not that at all. This is induction cooking and reducing that electrical current to that cooking zone means that uh, we're able to reduce that temperature very quickly and we've come off of boil, and if I was 
maybe uh, chopping up some vegetables for a stock pot, for a stew or a soup, uh, and I want it to return to a boil, mm. uh, I can very quickly bring that pot and here we are, it's like magic. I'm back to a rolling boil. So I, I, I'm finally getting some bigger bubbles. I think we're almost there. Almost there. The suspense there. is killing almost me. Almost there, almost there, almost there. Uh, I, in the meantime, I'm gonna turn on uh, my cooking zone <coughs> that my wok is on. Um, and on our <coughs> electric 30-inch uh, induction surface, we have four different cooking zones. Uh, one of the beauties of this particular configuration is the fact that we have a direct select power uh, indicator down below between zero, nine, and then s the zones that have boost. So I've got my pot of boiling water down to a five right now. I'm just gonna remove that because it's pretty clear here that I am I, I, still I, going. I, I finally got there, I think. I'm at, a, I'm at a rolling boil. Doesn't sound vigorous to me, well, though. Well, it's not vigorous, it's boiling. We'll accept that as a, a, a valiant attempt at uh, trying to get as quickly as induction to a rolling boil. So, so I, I'm going to shut mine off too. There you go. So, so uh, we're preheating our wok. You just saw me uh, grab a dish towel. And one of the other things that I love about induction is how easy it is to clean. We had some water bubble over the edges of the pot and I'm able to really easily and safely wipe down the entire uh, surface of uh, the cooktop. Uh, the pot is where that heat was created. So this is going to be warm. I was just boiling on it and it's, it's warm to the touch, but that's uh, a, a direct uh, effect of what the pot translated back to the cooking surface from a heat perspective. And because the, the cooking surface detects the pot's been removed, it's asking me, where's this pot? It's, it's wavering between off and five. It's looking for something here and it doesn't detect it. And so from a safety perspective, as soon as you remove a pot, there's no electrical current that's being sent to this cooking zone. So therefore, actually quite safe. Now you're preheating your wok. I, I've been preheating my wok. So, so the one thing I honestly can say, yep. um, I'm getting a little warm. It is, a little it, warm. It, it, it is a little warm on this side. You know, I think one thing about wok cooking is um, the wok really does have to be hot. You know, almost at a smoking point, and that's the benefit of it. Um, it is taking a bit more time than I would expect, but it's but it's not bad. Okay, you've just explained one of the uh, uh, perhaps downsides to cooking with gas is the ambient room temperature where you're using one, two, three, four, five, six, eight burners. Uh, that's a lot of. Uh, fossil fuel burning, a lot of heat transitioning to the atmosphere and therefore yeah. a lot of radiant heat, ambient heat. So we actually see obviously as a trend in professional kitchens a move towards. Ab absolutely, induction cooking. So Kelly, what we're gonna do next, we got our wok preheating. We're gonna also preheat our. That, yeah, I, I was gonna say, Mike, it would be good if I could get a bit of a head start on the next item, which is the cast iron, which we're gonna do some searing. Um, because I need a bit of time to get this. Yeah, thing let's do up. that. Okay. So we got we got these beautiful Staub um, cast iron yeah. enameled yeah. Um, grilling pans. So we're gonna skillet. Uh, we're gonna put these down. And before I put mine down, Kelly, I like the look of my cooking surface, and so I'm gonna take <clears throat> the added step of doing a little preventative cleanup, and I'm just gonna grab some paper towel and put it down on the cooking surface. This is gonna protect the, the look of the glass ceramic, but it's also gonna mean that any uh, spillage from splattering that comes up from the actual cooking here will be caught by that paper towel and help me with my cleanup. As long as I'm not covering my controls, the cooktop's not going to complain. And so I'm just gonna set down this beautiful enameled skillet here, and I'm gonna pre-warm this. Now the key to cooking with cast iron is to let it heat up. Heat up. Absolutely. Because uh, cast iron is a great insulator, great holder of yep. energy, and so you want to slowly bring that up to temperature. Mm -hmm. My wok, I'm just going to... I can see it's... Yeah. I'm just going to bring it up to a higher temperature here. I've selected eight as my power level now. And you're going to guide me through kind of just a random simulation of what we may cook in a wok. We have some some broccoli and some onions, perhaps. Yeah, I do, we're just going to do a very, very quick uh, stir fry. Um, you know, and I think the benefit of wok cooking is really also 
the way the walks are designed, um, the main heat is obviously at the bottom, but you know, whether you're doing fried rice or some veg, you can also push things to the side. Um, and in some ways you have different temperature zone naturally with the design of the wok. But we're just gonna do a very, very quick demonstration of wok cooking that really you can uh, equally do it on the induction um, cooktop as you can with gas. I think really in this one, a lot will come down to your choice of pan and the quality of pan. Right. Um, because again, I think with wok cooking, the benefit is the heat going up the sides, which obviously with gas, because there's the natural flames that will go up. Um, and to achieve that, you really need a good quality pan when you do induction wok cooking. Yeah, this is where the purist uh, would probably say, you know, Kelly, you have the distinct advantage of having that, the flames kind of lick that uh, outside of that pot. Uh, so that's, that's, I would say, you know, maybe an advantage, but because we've achieved the nice flat surface with the construction of this five ply uh, uh, induction wok, uh, I think we're able to kind of get at the same kind of similar results. Yep, absolutely. I, I would think so too. Now, the other advantage, Mike, I noticed, so I'm touching the handle of the wok. Right. Mine's getting a little hot. Is it? Uh, just a little bit, um, <laughs> which I know obviously, you know, that is one of the challenges with cooking with gas, which isn't, you know, it's just something you have to be aware of that I may have to turn to. And you'll see in a lot of professional kitchens, the chefs using, uh, a hand towel or a towel like this, right? Um, because the reality is the handles do get hot. You get a lot of that radiant yep. heat coming back at the hand. So I think we're ready to go with the wok. If you are, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think uh, so we got some heat. Good. So it's nice and hot. So we're going to get some oil in there first. Let's do that. And and you want to make sure that one, you should be seeing uh, a bit of smoke come off the pan as the oil, oil hits, which is definitely a good sign. Maybe a little too much in this case. Ooh. Yeah, you have it too. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna get the, uh, and really we're just gonna do a very, very quick stir fry. So we just get the onions in there. Let me add a bit more oil. You are really. Uh... Yeah, it, it, it's a little smoking. I've, I've turned it down maybe a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna get my onions in there. Oops, that was hot. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna get my onions going too. And quickly caramelize them. Nice, really nicely balanced wok, I would say. This is- Yeah, absolutely. Really nice. Now I may have set mine a little bit warmer, so I'm gonna start getting my broccoli in there because I already see my onions actually getting translucent. And normally if you're at home, you can add oyster sauce, sesame oil. Uh, in this case, we're just gonna do a bit of salt, pepper. You got your broccoli going? I got the broccoli in there already. All right, let's do that. I'm just gonna do a bit of salt and pepper. Now the other thing, Mike, just to, because we have no sauces, um, you could, if you wanted to, just take a bit of the, the water from your boiling pan there and just add that in to, to add a bit of moisture if you want. You don't okay. have to. That'll just help the uh, broccoli cook down a little bit. So how's that uh, walk working on the induction? Actually really nice, uh, lovely. Cool, so here we are, induction cooking surface, and we are uh, achieving some pretty cool results that uh, some people would hesitate to, to kind of maybe experiment with that uh, induction cooking surface. Yeah, so. absolutely. And again, the great thing about this pan that we got from our friends at Zwilling is it actually works equally well on both induction and gas, actually. I would say so, yeah. This is a, a nice kind of, I, I've actually not, 
actually worked with this uh, pen up until today, and I'm I'm actually quite impressed at number one the balance, the the way that the heat is transferred up the sides yep. of the pot, even with an induction cooking surface where you don't have um, that. Uh, flame that's super obvious and coming up and licking the sides of that pot. So I'm pretty much good on the on the stir fry. I think I added a little too much water to mine so I would <laughs> reduce that down a little bit. But uh, so not bad. So I know Mike um, uh, a question we get a lot is about searing because there really is this general feeling. I'm gonna take mine off uh, as well. There we go. Um, with searing, people really feel that the reason why they want gas is it sears. You know, they, they see the heat. There's, you know, we off, you, you talk a lot about the emotional aspect of gas cooking um, and seeing the flame, which is a huge benefit, um, yeah. which you don't get in electric or induction at right. the end of the day. Um, but searing is often a question that people say, well, I have to get gas because I sear a lot and, and I need that super, super high heat. Um, so I think one thing we wanted to show a bit of a comparison on is searing on gas and uh, searing on induction. Yeah, so we're going to be using uh, these cast iron skillets. But for example, if somebody had a stainless steel uh, teppanyaki mm -hmm. uh, skillet, uh, which is great for pancakes, sliders, hamburgers, flat, uh, yeah. that hot plate, mixed grill, fish is excellent. But if you're into indoor barbecuing or if you want to barbecue 365 days a year and you're considering, you know, should I get gas? Should I go all out and, and go with the range top or uh, one of our integrated gas cooktops? Or, or can I get by with all the benefits of induction and still do that indoor barbecue? Yeah, so I think it'll be great to show this process. Yeah, so how's your heat in the bottom of your cast iron? Are you satisfied that you're going to get... Yeah, it's not bad. Like I, think, I think I can sear on it. Okay, so... Again, we're using cast iron, so we really want to load up that iron yep. with... And it's actually the same pan uh, in regards to both induction and Correct. gas in this case. Right. And, uh, yeah, what I also would say is that... Um, yeah, why don't we prep our steaks, actually? Yeah, why don't we do that? And then, because actually, while we're searing, I know there's some questions out there that we need to get to. Um, so, Sylvie, I know you've got some questions. We'll be sure to get to you very, very... Uh, shortly, but we're going to prep our steaks first, then we'll answer them as uh, as the steaks cook. Okay, so um, a little bit of salt. Uh, these are some really nice sirloins. I'm just going to get some nice rock salt on here, kosher salt, I believe. Yep. And I'm just going to uh, get some oil. So, so Mike, I know. Oh yeah, let's do um, oil. You know, we don't actually coat the pan with oil. We actually prep the steak. Yeah. Uh, just to make sure that the oil's not burning as well in the pan. Exactly. So to avoid that smoke show that you would get, you want to uh, get that oil right on the protein itself. Yep. And I like to, I don't know about you, but I, I like a crust on steak, so I do salt fairly aggressively. aggressively. Yeah, to, <laughs> to get that... Nice. Yeah, lock in those, those flavors, and salt brings out really the best in the actual meat itself. So we're going to get some pepper on here as well. Is your uh, cast iron skillet smoking at all? What's that looking like? It's still not smoking. It's been on for a little while, but it's, it's getting there. Yeah, I think we're going to get a sizzle out of it. Yeah, yeah. Now, the size of this steak, uh, I would say maybe two minutes a side would probably do okay. the trick. Yeah, I think so. I, like a medium. I like a medium rare, but that's so okay. Go no, like no, okay, we'll, we'll go medium. That's fine. All right. So I got my uh, cooktop. I'm cooking at a nine. This surface is very hot. I'm pretty satisfied with what I'm going to see. But because we've uh, said I'm going to go for two minutes a side. And okay, so I'm going to go two minutes a side. I'll do, th I'll do the same as you. Why don't you set your timer on your uh, cooktop and I'll do the timer on mine. My... Well, that's not, that's not quite fair, Mike. Okay. Uh, <laughs> one of the other cool benefits of cooking with induction is that you can set quite easily a timer. So I've just set two minutes just with the button presses that I did there. Um, and I'm going to drop my steak in. Okay. I'm going gonna, gonna to gonna drop mine in as well. All right. 
Okay, we got a nice little sizzle happening. Now, really the cast iron pan, I think on my side, could have done with a little bit more preheat time. Okay. Uh, I was pretty conservative with the approach, but I've, I've set up my timer for two minutes. Uh, this will just give me an indication, and it's a countdown timer as well. So at about the one minute mark, what I'll do is I'll rotate my steaks about 90 degrees to get those cross hatch marks as well. And, uh, and then I can flip over at the two minute mark. Okay, so I'll, I'll follow you. So just tell me whenever you're ready. Yeah. Uh, Mike, while we're waiting, do you mind maybe taking a couple of questions? Let's do it. Okay, so uh, Sylvie, you have a couple of questions for us. So we're going to see what we can get to. Um, first question Sylvie has, Mike, is what, you, you talked a little bit about the boost earlier, but can you maybe re-explain on the induction what the boost does? Okay, uh, that's a great question because we actually have a really effective way of uh, working uh, with the adjoining uh, cook, cooking zones to take power and, uh, and get the maximum amount of power as required. So I'm just doing my crossover, Kelly. Okay. Um, so what do I mean by that? I mean this cook in our uh, four burner, uh, 30 inch induction cooktop, we have what we call networked pairs. So this cooking surface is paired with this cooking zone on the uh, top side. And then uh, this cooking zone here is pa paired with this cooking zone up top as well. And so we don't share across multiple zones, we just share across uh, network pairs and so in this case here if I was boosting at this particular cooking zone what I would do is essentially be stealing or sharing power from this networked pair so it's uh, basically a means by which we're and boost really is a super high output of electrical energy and so therefore with a rolling boil in in under two minutes you really wouldn't need boost much longer than, than two minutes anyway. And so once you remove it off boost, your, your network pair will come back to its original cooking zone power. We're done our two minutes. I'm gonna set another timer for two minutes and flip these guys over. Okay. So I got some really nice checkerboard pattern on my steak. I do as well. Um, I can see from the side profile of my protein that I've cooked uh, exactly right for medium um, and yeah that's gonna be a, a pretty mean looking steak here in a minute you're doing really well there with yours yeah the, the steaks actually going well right now I do have the setting on high uh, so I do want that continue to sear it because like you said you know this protein isn't so so thick right. um, so we want to make sure we have a sear on both sides so yeah, yeah it's doing well cool uh, I mentioned our, cook, our, our countdown timer that's basically operating as an egg timer for us. Uh, we see that number up here. I got two minutes on a countdown. Um, we also have auto zone shut off with our induction cooktops as well, an added benefit um, so that you can actually automatically turn off a cooking surface if you knew how much time was required for this particular zone. So just keep that in mind. That's another one of our timer functions that we have on all of our induction cooktops. I got to the one minute mark, I'm gonna cross over. Okay, so Mike, as you cross over, I'm gonna ask you another question. Um, so Sylvie is asking the question, is there a big price difference between gas and induction? So our, our lineup in our induction cooktops ranges typically around uh, $3,000 up to uh, $4,600 or so, depending on the size of the cooking surface. <clears throat> and the features they're, uh, they're in. PowerFlex tends to have a bit of a premium attached to it. So that's the neighborhood you're living in with induction. Uh, and then when it comes to cooking with gas, you have more of a spectrum, I'd say, as far as price is concerned. We have our classic gas cooktops. Uh, we have our MasterChef gas cooktops that are more European inspired. And then of course we have a full lineup of range gas range tops, which can get even more expensive than even our most expensive uh, induction cooking surfaces. So really have a look on our website. You'll look at and see range, uh, under range product, you'll see our range tops. Uh, and I think our steak is done. Okay. Uh, and then on our cooktop section also, you'll see um, the induction and gas cooktop configurations that we have available. So I'm just gonna pull off my steak here. All right, my paper towel hasn't really uh, There's no fire combusted. going on, so that's good. 
It may have browned because that's typically what you'll sometimes see um, with paper towels. And this is great if I was uh, maybe doing uh, frying or wonton frying or something like that. Uh, this handle is probably really hot to touch, so I'm gonna avoid doing that. But uh, I would say I'll grab my handle holder here. And I'm just gonna remove this cast iron skillet. Put it back here. So Mike, I'm going to, uh, while you do that, I'm just gonna leave my steak on your table. Now we were kick cooking with heat here. Wow. But so this is great. Now to wipe this all down would be pretty amazing. I'm, I'm right over that surface that was really uh, wow. searing that steak and, and uh, emitting a uh, huge amount of heat at that bottom of the pan, but the, the byproduct here is cleanup really is just about throwing this really out um, and yeah, they're pretty neat. So Mike, on the question of cleaning then, um, let's, let's maybe quickly take another question. Um, so Sylvie has a question, uh, can you clean the induction surface with any cleaner? And then the follow-up question is, how do you clean the grills from the gas cooktop? Okay, so uh, the cooktop, um, you can use, uh, we like to use microfiber cloth uh, to uh, clean your uh, ceramic glass cooking surface. There's also a product that we sell through our care collection that's a purpose-built cleaner for the surface that kind of brings it back to life. Uh, very easy to clean, you don't get boil overs, so you don't have cooked on. Uh, items over time as well and so you, you don't have those same kind of discolorations um, so just keep in mind it's as easy to clean as any cooking surface you've ever used in your life just stay away from using scour pads would be our advice or anything super abrasive and then on our range tops we have those cast iron grates that are big robust kind of almost industrial looking but those actually fit quite nicely in our um, bottom basket of our dishwashers. So they're really meant to um, dovetail nicely with uh, a, a nice wash in our dishwashers under either a pots and pans cycle or the actual purpose designed uh, grates function that we have on some of our dishwashers through our mid-range right through the top. So just keep that in mind. So really easy to clean and uh, not having to wrestle them around too, too much anyway. So Mike, I've left my steak on your station. If we want to do a side-by-side -side comparison, because again, I think we do get a lot of questions around, can I sear using induction? And, and there really, for some reason, is this perception that searing sim seems to be a challenge. Um, so I have left my steak on yours. So if you want to do a side-by-side yeah. -side for everybody. Beautifully cooked steak. Um, I would say the interior temperature of this is exactly where I want to be if I'm at a medium um, and awesome seared in. Obviously, I'm cutting into steak. If you're a purist, if you enjoy grilling steak, you know that I've kind of gone against one of the cardinal conventions of grilling meat, and that's cutting into a steak before it's really had a chance to rest and relax. Um, but of course, we're trying to get this demonstration in here, and I'm just going to pull Kelly's steak into view here. This is mine. Let me remove this out of the way here. I'm going to say that my lines look nicer, but <laughs> we'll see. The proof is in the pudding. Let's cut this one open. Also, actually really good. Nicely done. I think similar results. The one benefit here maybe of induction is the speed by which we can bring cast iron up to temperature, but really the results here are, are very similar and I'd say just as nice. Yeah. Let's get that out of the way. Let's take a look at this steak again. And again, if you look at the surface, which I think people really compare when it comes to searing, they're very, very similar in results. Yeah, I probably used a little bit less black pepper than you did. Well, yes. Uh, you crusted yours up pretty nicely, <laughs> but I'd say very similar results. Um, you do save a little bit of time. We had our egg timer that you kind of piggybacked on uh, I did. from a feature perspective on my side. So there is that. Uh, keep in mind that, for example, in the midst of that cooking process, if I had the unfortunate uh, circumstance of having to attend to a family emergency or 
uh, doorbell or something or other, we do have our stop and go feature on our induction cooking surfaces. And this is a great feature why, uh, why, whereby you can essentially reduce all the heat uh, from all your cooking zones to a simmer uh, by just pressing our pause button and then bringing that back to life post life circumstance and resuming all your cooking zones to that uh, individual uh, power level. So another cool feature that we didn't really get to talk about that I think is worthwhile. Well, Mike, I think that's, uh, I think it's been great to be able to actually show a lot of things that um, I think people assume or we talk about. Um, so to wrap this up a little bit is uh, as a customer, if I'm trying to choose between the two, Maybe what would your advice be on a decision, you know, which is better for me? Yeah, there's so many things, <laughs> right? So many things. So uh, uh, there's the emotional, right? Mm. So what do, I, what do I feel most comfortable with? Uh, we invite, obviously, anybody who has never seen induction up close. This is why we're doing our live sessions is so we can breathe some life into these appliances because, of course, a, a photo on a website doesn't really do it justice. Uh, mm -hmm. And most people are familiar with having cooked on gas at some point. So induction really needs to be seen to be believed. Um, but once you get past that, if you're open to the idea from a design perspective, uh, the integration within to a kitchen design is, is pretty uh, amazing. The fact that you can have these cooking surfaces extend the space of the countertops in your kitchen. Uh, you are coming home with a load of groceries, uh, car keys in hand, uh, toddler underfoot and and where you're gonna drop your things you can drop them on your induction cooking surface uh, because that essentially is an extension of your workbench uh, so from that perspective really nice from a design perspective it does typically look um, certainly sometimes more in line with contemporary or transitional kitchen so this is really nice elegant but uh, you can you can kind of get around that it's really what you feel most comfortable with, I would say. Um, personally, I don't think it's a secret here. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of induction, and so therefore uh, I am here. But if I was a classically trained chef and I liked flambeing and igniting my pan of brandy from the surface by dripping down brandy down that side and having that flame ignite, or if I like melting marshmallows and making s'mores on my countertop, can't quite do that with induction so you'd be left with gas so a lot of factors have to be taken into account and really uh, you can't go wrong with either um, it really is a matter of taste and a matter of lifestyle thanks Mike and, and I think you know speaking on the on the gas side of things I think you know when it comes to design I think it is a bit of personal preference because you know I think um, with our range, uh, range tops and our gas cooktops. I think they're beautifully designed. Um, they give a different look, I would say, a bolder statement uh, in the kitchen, which I, you know, I think some people do like. Um, I think when I look at our range tops, the one thing I really do like from a visual perspective as well, and, and it won't, it'll be difficult for the camera, unfortunately, to see in this particular case, but um, you know, there are design elements where you know, the, the, the knobs light up. So from also a safety side, uh, we talk about induction absolutely being uh, safe uh, or much safer uh, due to heat. But, you know, with the knobs being lit up, at least that also tells me that a burner's on. Right. So proactively, you know, I can be aware that there's also, that element. Yeah. And also in that vein of, of design and philosophy in the kitchen, I would say that the camera on you would show, I think, one of our biggest advantages as well of, of cooking on a cooktop. Never mind if it's induction or gas. Mm. The fact that then your wall oven is behind you at a really nice height. That's right? actually so, a good point. So I, I really like cooktops as a method of cooking surfaces because uh, in a range format, you're left with having to maybe compromise ergonomically. Right. Uh, but with a wall oven configuration in an island, you can place your, your cooktop and then have your bank of wall ovens in behind you at a really nice high height for, for opening the door, lifting things into place, yep. basting, checking uh, on things. That's really, I think, one of the kind of underestimated uh, or underutilized kind of design philosophies that I think really go well with cooking on a cooktop. Perfect. Well, thanks, Mike, for this uh, session. This it was actually a lot of fun to be able to go head to head with you. Although, uh, you know, 
we know you have a bias. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I should have actually thanks, swapped with thanks, you. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, thanks for that. Uh, hopefully we've been able to answer your questions or at least show you um, really a bit of a comparison between gas and induction. And, and at the end of the day, a lot will come down to your own uh, personal preference. We know again where Mike stands on, on this. So, um, but it was it was a lot of fun doing this head to head. We've actually never done that before. So, uh, hopefully, it's answered the questions that you have. Um, we want to thank you again for joining us on this session of Meal Alive. Hopefully, it's answered questions that you've had in regards to uh, the induction technology versus gas technology um, and the differences that we were able to demonstrate. Um, a couple of last points to, to wrap up. Uh, Mike, I'm going to throw it back to you in a second for one last uh, comment on regards to uh, some of the promotions we have out there in regards to cooking. So right now, for those of you that are interested in buying meal appliances, there are different ways you can do that. So if you go on the shop on Mila Live, uh, on Mila.ca, our shop is open 24 seven. Um, you can have a look there to see what appliances are available. We offer free shipping. Uh, in certain cases on certain product categories. So be sure to take advantage of that right now as you remain at home. A new service that we are, are providing is our Mila virtual sales consultation. If you go on milalive.ca, um, you have now the choice to actually book a virtual sales consultation with one of our product experts. You may be lucky to draw Mike in, in one of those. We're not, we're not sure when he's on, but- It'd be uh, my pleasure. Yeah. And you'll actually be able to interact one-on-one -on -one via a two-way video con consultation. Um, our product expert would actually be standing in, exactly in front of the product that you're actually interested in, so it's very personal. And they'll be able to open the oven door, they'll be able to actually walk you through any questions you have and show you the different controls that we have um, and walk you through. So. Be sure to take advantage of that. Uh, if you do have very specific questions in regards to uh, a product that you're considering buying right now, also ensure that you're actually going on Mila.ca to see which one of our retail partners um, is open right now. Uh, across the country, as many of you know, uh, the provinces are opening up at different paces. Um, so be sure to go out and check which one of our retail partners uh, is open. Uh, and you can find that on Mila.ca. With that note, I also want to thank our retail partners um, across the country who are supporting this initiative of Mila Live. So I want to welcome uh, the guests who have joined us and thank you for joining us from our retail partners across the country who supported us uh, from the West Coast moving east. We have in uh, the West Coast, we have Baker's Appliances, um, Avenue Appliances, Jerome Appliances, Midland Appliances as well as our partners at Trail Appliances. So thank you for inviting your customers to join us. Uh, in the Ontario region, we have Tasco Appliances, Goman Appliances, uh, as well as Appliance Canada. And then moving east, we have Creative Appliances and Almire Appliances in Montreal. So thank you for our retail partners for your continued support. Um, be sure to look up uh, your closest retail partner um, on Mila.ca. So Mike, very quickly, uh, I'm gonna shoot it back to you before we sign off uh, for the night. Um, what are some of the promotions we have on cooking appliances right now uh, to offer our customers and viewers? You're interrupting my steak dinner, but oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no mind, let's do this. So uh, from a promotional perspective, we have an interesting offer uh, for the month of May. Um, our offer is as follows. We have a, a build a dream kitchen package. It's our first time running this promotion ever. It's essentially an offer whereby you can maximize savings by adding things into a package approach of purchase. So essentially your discounts would start at 5% by purchasing or adding to a basket uh, any of our cooking product or refrigeration product. So if you have three items, uh, you start at 5% savings. If you add a fourth item, uh, and it can be a hood fan, it can be one of our lovely induction cooktops or range tops. Um, you can marry that up with our refrigeration product. So if you have four products, you're entitled to a 7.5% pricing concession. And then a, a fifth product uh, opens the door to a 10% savings on your Build-A-Dream Kitchen package. So just uh, keep those offers in mind. They are running until May the 28th. 
I May think. May the 28th. We'll call it May the 28th, but it could be to the end of the month. We're not sure. Build a dream kitchen package. Really nice uh, way to tap into savings. And you can arrive at five pieces quite quickly when you uh, add in a cooking surface, a wall oven, a hood fan, and a fridge, and you're at 10%. So it's a really nice offer. Great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so again, uh, we want to thank everybody for joining us. Also want to share with you a new campaign that we launched last week, which we're very excited about. Um, we really do understand and see the challenges some of the small businesses across Canada are facing, obviously during these times right now. And we want to try to support them as much as possible. So we launched a new campaign called Hashtag Mila Dines Local. And what we're asking for is if you're a small restauranteur or if you know of one that you want to share this campaign with, um, share our post on Facebook and Twitter. And we want to know what your restaurant's signature dish is. And we want to invite a select group of um, local restaurateurs to come and cook with us. Obviously, um, in some cases, it will be done virtually. But we want you the opportunity to come and share your dish with us, talk about your business, promote your business. And in addition to that, what we will do is we're actually going to buy a hundred dishes from that restaurant to actually donate to frontline workers um, that are out there. So uh, we're very excited about this initiative. Again, if you know of a restaurant that you want to share this initiative with, be sure to just uh, have them have a look at our Facebook and Twitter posts, or you can visit MilaLive.ca for the details of this campaign. On behalf of Mike, myself, the entire Mila Canada team, uh, we want to uh, send a very big thank you to all the frontline essential workers that are out there um, providing the necessary services to all the communities across Canada. Uh, for your bravery, uh, we want to send a big thank you. Uh, be safe. Uh, everybody stay home um, as we will be sure to get through this. So we hope to see you again on Friday on our uh, next session of Milo Live. We wish you a fantastic day, a great evening, um, and we want to thank you again. So have a great evening.